I want to tell you about a fantastic trader called Nicholas Darvis and a book that he wrote called How I Made Two Million Dollars in a Stock Market. Now I'm always telling you to read lots of books about trading and it's not necessarily to help you build a trading strategy but just to get inspiration and also to learn from the mistakes and the success stories to understand what to do more of or what to do less of. And I think for any trader, Nicholas Davos is an, an exceptional character to learn about. He was a brilliant trader but more importantly he's an inspiration for those of you that are trading that also have a 9 to 5 or are just learning the craft. So to give you a bit of background, Nicholas actually turns 25 thousand dollars into two million dollars in the 1950s so imagine that two million dollars now with things like inflation is going to be worth a lot more even the people that tried to say that he was a fraud and they can't clarify whether those trades actually exist or not to make two million dollars even they say that they can verify that he made two hundred and fifty thousand dollars so even if that was the case he still made ten times his money so either way it's an exceptional exceptional thing to do and I think he's a real inspiration for everyone so he was trading in the 1950s and he was actually a professional dancer. So he was finding ways to trade around his full-time job which was dancing. So while being a full-time dancer in his downtime he was studying how to trade the markets. And when I say studying I don't mean a couple of hours here and there. He actually committed to doing about eight hours a day and he said to have read about 200 books on trading. Things like how to read the ticker tape, how to actually read volume and price action, things like that to understand how the stock market works and how he can benefit from it. What he ended up doing is creating a strategy that worked for him that a lot of people since have adopted but that was fitting around his career. He knew he was traveling around a lot that he had to work sometimes during the day so he had a strategy that meant that at the end of the day he could check what was happening in a stock market and place orders with his broker for the next day and it didn't matter because it was with his system that was the criteria he needed to open his trades and he molded it around his full-time career. So he didn't give up everything and become a day trader. He learn from the people that were day traders that were doing it as a full-time job in the markets, the ticker tape readers and things like that, the real stock market operators. He learned from them from the books that they had written and adapted what he had learned to create a system for himself which was so, so successful. What Nicholas Darvis created was something called the Darvis Boxes. Now I don't think that these work so much anymore and we've actually created a variation of that of our own called the Duomo variation of the Darvis Boxes and it's taught in our full course. But what he basically did was create a set of rules that dictated how he was going to trade. So as I've said, he only used to read the stock prices at the end of the day and he didn't look at charts or anything, he was just looking at the prices. And he ignored what anyone in Wall Street was saying, the brokers, what uh, what tips people were giving him. He stayed away from other traders that might be talking about what stocks are doing well, or what they're seeing in the market. He didn't want any influence. He didn't even read the news stories. He was so ingrained with his strategy that he just didn't want to have any other distractions. And this is something that you could take on board as well because often, we kind of second guess ourselves and wonder if we're on the right track because we see someone else is maybe going short when we're going long and that kind of thing. We can get really confused if we start reading all the articles. Even watching Bloomberg during the day, you see market commentators one second who are saying to go long and 10 minutes later they'll have someone else that has the opposite opinion. So you have to forge your own opinion and that's what he did. So he stayed away from any influences and distractions. And he'd look through the charts and only go for blue chip companies, so no penny stocks or anything like that. He valued liquidity. He he wanted to know that if he was going to get out of a trade there was going to be someone to take the other side of the transaction and in penny stocks there was no guarantee of that so he wanted to stick to liquid markets like I always say to you guys as well look for volume look for liquidity stick to the major pairs look for the major assets and that's what he did so first of all he'd look for signs of assets that looked like they had good growth potential that they looked like they had some upside he'd only ever go long he would never go short because of the risks involved in going short with equities so he only wanted to go long he looked for companies that had good growth potential and he looked for companies that were buying like moving in price based on high volume so it could clearly be seen that there was actually reason behind the move and it wasn't just fluctuating around on low volume. There was high volume and it was moving as a result of that. And in fact, as a result of this kind of analysis that he was doing, he spotted a lot of insider trading before it was found out. So because of the activity type that he was seeing in the market, he was able to spot when people could see something was going on before the news was announced. So that's a real advantage. That's having a real edge in the market. And that's just from understanding what he was looking at. 
so well. And just think, this was all part-time, working around his full-time job as a dancer, traveling around the world. He still was doing these trades, making this money. Now, the Davos boxes that he created, which I referred to a second ago, what he was basically doing is looking for the waves in the market. It's what we talk about a lot of the time with our waves, when we're looking for the higher highs and higher lows and that kind of thing. He was wanting to buy low and sell high, but based on an upwards movement. So he created these boxes around the price, which we've adapted, like I said, to our own version. So it's not necessarily correct anymore to use his approach. There could be some slight variations that would work a lot better. But he was buy low within the, the wave and then start selling when it looked like that momentum was running out. He wasn't just getting out of the trade once he hit his profit target. He had exit criteria based on the movements up. So he would have what was sort of like a trailing stop loss, which I also use to this day in a similar kind of way, where once it broke through one wave, he would then move his stop to be at the bottom of that wave. So if it broke out, then he would be out of the trade. So what he was looking for is trending markets where these boxes were getting constructed one after the other. And he wanted to ride that crest of the wave and get out when it looked like the market was turning or when there were not so many buyers in the market that the sellers could kind of get a relief and bring the stock price back down. So he developed these rules and there were so many of these things that it just made it easy for him at the end of the day to check the prices. He had notes on different companies that he was watching and he was able to spot which ones matched his criteria and understand like without even a chart, the general picture of what's happening with these stock prices. So that's the box theory and that's Nicholas Davis. And if you haven't read the book, I really recommend it. It could be an inspiration to all of us, whether you believe that he made the $2 million or just $250,000. Either way, this is an inspirational and exceptional trader from his history which we can all learn something from about how to adapt build a system build rules that we're going to stick to but adapt around our lifestyle and the way that we want to trade so guys if you like this video i know it's a bit different to other ones i've done so far give us a thumbs up give us a like so i know that you enjoyed this one remember if you want more videos about learning to trade then hit that subscribe button and if you want to learn our exclusive and unique method of trading the links in the description box to join our inner circle mailing list for free and from there, you can get access to our full online course. You can learn our variation of the Darvis boxes as well, since I refer to it in this video. So guys, I appreciate you watching as always. Take care. See you in the next video.